for 12 days of Christmas today until midnight tonight. If you spend $45 on our website, you get our free stocking stuffer bundle, which includes a free mouse pad, free coaster pack, free keychain, free bracelets, and a free toaster patch. If you spend over $45 on the site, just check out. We'll throw it all in your order, and that's all there is to it. So order now until midnight tonight, and you get all that stuff for free. So thanks for being a part of the 12 days of Christmas. So I've been doing this channel for two or three years now, and we've cut apart hundreds of boots, hundreds of shoes, and now at the end of the year, I like doing these wrap-ups where we rank things and what's, what's my favorite boot of whatever year it is. So I thought it'd be fun to do, rank all the cap toe boots that we've done from worst to best to really see who makes the best cap toe boot and how they rank and all the different reasons why certain boots are better than others. Plus we've got a couple extra bonuses. We got some sneakers, we got some uh, different styles of shoes. So top 10 cap toe boots, starting with number 10, the absolute worst boot that we've probably cut apart in the entire channel. This is a, I think it's like an Amazon Basics shoe. It was like 20 bucks. It was the cheapest boot that will happen to have a cap toe on it that you could buy on Amazon. And this shoe or this boot is absolute garbage. It has like this fake suede leather looking material, but it's really just a layer of foam with like flocked fibers on top. And the sole can, and so like the problem with that is literally as soon as you put them on, that foam creases and folds and all of a sudden your, your brand new $20 pair of shoes and boots look completely worn out. Plus on the inside, it's all just lightly glued together. In that video, I literally just ripped it apart pretty easily by hand. It's got just really cheap materials. Lots of voids in the in the sole construction, which isn't always a bad thing. It just needs the amount, it needs something to equally compress those layers so you don't get high spots and low spots, which this does not have. Zero real world construction. It's just really cheaply cemented together. Terrible leather, terrible construction, and uh, but a really good price at $20. But I would avoid this style of shoe and boot at all costs. Your, your, your money's better spent on some sort of like thrifted boot or shoe or borrowing someone's over buying a $20 shoe that's gonna end up in the landfill like two days later. So worst, last number 10. Next, number nine is the Converse uh, wedge sole boot. This had some potential because it looks like it has a real Goodyear welt. The leather looks like it's real leather, but once we cut these apart, and even the welt, it's the leather, it's the welt is real leather. But once we cut them apart, same kind of story as the, the Amazon boots, the thing just comes apart. They're so easy to rip apart. I would rip these apart now, but I don't want to do it again to just destroy the half of this. And the, the leather, it is real leather, but it's really heavily finished. It's got that really heavy plastic coating on top. It has the fake print embossed into it to give it that tumbled texture. It is backed by some canvas, but it's really cheap. Like it's not, it's not glued together, so it doesn't actually give it any structural or extra structure to it. And so this is just one of those examples a, of a, a sneaker company making a sneaker look like a boot and actually dropping the quality because they don't know how to make boots or they didn't pay the money to R&D how to make a decent boot because this is a, basically the same thing as an Amazon boot, just cemented together, falls apart pretty easily, really terrible leather, and uh, really not worth the money. I would avoid this one at all costs too. Number nine, the terrible Converse boot. Number eight, is the Oliver Cabell boot. This is number, this should be number 11 to be honest because I never paid for the video. Oliver Cabell stiffed me on this video. But to be fair, the video was pretty negative and uh, so I understand why he didn't pay for it but he was contractually bound to pay for a video. He agreed to it, he signed off on the video and refused to pay for it. So um, maybe think twice about uh, supporting Oliver Cabell. But as for this boot, the part of the reason I didn't like it was it doesn't have a true toe cap, which isn't that big of a deal, especially for more dress style. But the sole construction was really odd because it was Blake stitched on like half of the boot and then like another stitch combined some of the layers on the inside and then it was like very lightly tacked together at the heel and just was not a great boot for the price. And like you could, you could kind of just tear it apart. It's a step up from the other two in quality. But because they refused to pay for the video that they were contracted to pay me for, not a big fan. Now for a quick deviation, I just wanted to highlight a couple of toe cap shoes that I really like that I wish were a better quality. The first one is the Blazers. I just wish that they'd make a blazer that had a true toe cap that was really decent leather, no fake leather, and a really good construction because I, I like the idea of an actual sneaker that you could wear 
that has real durability, that has some resellability, kind of like the, the GPS, but that has the true toe cap. So I wish that did. And same with these new balances. I really like these 650s. Um, and like they, they have a really thick outsole, they have a really thick foam on the midsole, but the leather is the worst leather that we've seen in any sneaker. It's, the, it's just cheap splits that have a plastic coating on top. So I wish these were a true toe cap. So if you know any other, any sneakers that are a true toe cap that kind of ride that line between durability and the price point and the sneaker versus boot thing, let me know because I'm always searching for like a real nice heavy duty sneaker. Next, number, what are we on? 10, 9, 8, 7, the Corcoran Jump Boot. So this, this boot had a lot of potential. A lot of people really liked this boot, but after we cut it apart, you can see that the leather is just not the greatest quality of leather. It's really, it's a really loose uh, leather. It's, it just isn't, it wasn't, it either wasn't tanned correctly or it's just really, a really bottom of the barrel hides that just didn't have a lot of structure to the leather. And then the sole construction, it's fine. It's a 270 degree Goodyear welt, but the actual layers throughout the sole is where this kind of falters because you just have a lot of layers of foam that don't need to be there. And the heel, there's three independent layers of foam that are just kind of stacked on top of each other. And the problem, and this doesn't have any layer on top of that foam, so your, your foot just gonna wear this foam out in a hurry. And you're gonna have chunks falling off and it's, become, it's going to become very uncomfortable. And allegedly they have a more premium version of this, but this specific boot is more of a cosplay boot. Look, it looks like a paratrooper boot, but is not. And But it does have a true toe cap, which is a, a good plus. But it's something that I would only buy if I wanted it for that look for a few wears. It's not a really long lasting durable boot. But we are starting to get to the point where we're getting these durable boots because number six, I think, I'll probably have to fix all these as we go through 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, is the African Rangers by Jim Green. So Jim Green is really well known for making really durable, really well-made boots at a really affordable price. Because what they do is they, they just simplify the construction as much as possible. They remove a lot of the unnecessary bits. They remove all the aesthetic things and just focus on like quality and durability at an affordable price. So you don't have a lot of leather throughout the sole construction, but you do have that 360 stitch down construction. you got the, the leather is pretty decent leather. You know, it's a nice new buck leather. It's on par with most of the other boots that we cut apart with a decent leather. It is a true toe cap, but Jim Green is known for being really hard underfoot. Um, so for me, I put a different insole in here. And one of the positive attributes of Jim Green is they're really wide. They've got a really nice wide toe box, which is really hard to find in a, in a, a decent boot. And uh, I like this boot overall. I think it's a pretty solid boot. And with all these boots, I'll put links in the description, except for maybe some of the really terrible ones. But uh, yeah, Jim Green's a really good number six boot. Then to number five, very similar to the Oliver Cabells, but just better. You know, it's, this is the Beckett Simenon. And it's a very simple construction. It's a true Blake stitch construction where that stitch goes through the insole all the way to the outside. You can see the channel there. The leather is a decent leather. The lining is a good lining leather. And the sole construction has a lot of synthetic materials, but they're, it's a really tight construction. So if you look at these, these layers, they're really well bonded together. There's not a, a bunch of foam throughout the construction that's gonna allow a lot of slip. It's a slim, durable construction that has lots of leather throughout the construction as well. I'm pretty sure it's leather. Yeah, so it's, there's, not, there's not even any leather board in this Beckett Simenon. Um, it isn't a true toe cap because this is a more dress style shoe and a, or a boot. And so like a lot of times these guys don't want the extra bulk on the toe for a dress shoe. And so they keep it to a, uh, just a fake toe cap. And it looks like it's Goodyear welted, but that's a fake Goodyear welt around the outside. And it's just truly uh, Blake stitched. So a good option for an affordable, dressy looking toe cap boot. And then before we get to the next boot, I wanted to, because we, we kind of excluded a lot of the cemented construction boots just because they're very similar, but I wanted to give you a few different options to look at to, to just kind of round out your information on a toe cap boot, because not everyone's wanting a toe cap boot, cap toe boot, toe cap boot. Some people want them for work and they want that real world durability of extra toe cap. So first, do not buy Carhartt boots. They're absolute garbage. They just are terribly constructed. Lots of floppy layers, uh, voids just filled with blocks of foam. Terrible, terrible boots. I love their clothes, I just hate their boots. Then you've got, you basically have three different versions of a, a cap toe work boot that we've reviewed. You've got the Blundstones, you've got the Ariat lines, and then you've got Keens. 
blunt stones are mostly focused on comfort underfoot. There's tons of foam throughout the sole construction. There's these pads that pour on a really thick insole and you have, a, you have a steel toe. It's not a true toe cap, but it is like a TPU or like a rubbery toe cap. So if you're going for comfort underfoot first and you need a work boot that has a, a toe cap, go with a blunt stone. If you want a work boot that has lots of support, has some squish, but it's a really supportive boot that has a lot of different options for what you need. Ariat has so many of these, these uh, cemented construction boots or work boots that work really well and have like layers of, of leather at the heel to help pre prevent wear. And they have lots of different options for toes and uh, leathers and heights and stuff for just a general work boot. Ariat's really good for that, that foam sold construction. And then Keen, they kind of have this unique spot in the market where they, they don't have quite as big of a heel and they're a little bit more lightweight and flexible. And so if, you're, if you don't like the big heel and a lot of the foam underneath your foot and you want something that's a little bit closer to the ground, closer to a zero drop, Keen has lots of options. And the biggest attribute of Keen that I love is they have a nice wide toe box and they, they disguise it really well because they always have this little bump on the toe that kind of shifts your eye a little bit and brings your, it's not just a flat piece of leather, it, it kind of breaks up the toe box a little bit. So that's your three different types of cemented toe cap boots just in case you have zero interest in any of these heritage boots that we've cut apart. For number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I, don't, I can't keep track. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Number four is the Thursday Captain boot, I think is what it's called. So this is their not made in the United States boot. This is their made in Mexico boot. And it has like the, just their own branded outsole. And the leather is a really good leather. It's a, it's a, basically a wax nubuck, so you get that matte finish, and it kind of roughs up over time, where you can lay it back flat if you want to like grease these or oil these to make it a nice even texture again. Um, they all, pretty much all Thursdays are lined because they're that half heritage, half dress boot, and that's I think that's really where Thursday has made their name is by making durable, long-lasting, rugged-looking more. Uh, dress looking combination of the two boots that works really well and the thing I like about the Thursdays is they do add a lot of uh, leather throughout the construction you know they're they're actual from the insole down to the midsole has a lot of synthetic layers um, which is pretty common for the price but they always have a good chunk of leather in there somewhere for this one it's in the midsole which is really good to see and it's a true Goodyear welted construction 360 Goodyear welt and for the price it's up there with some of the best value boots that you can get and um, it's not a true toe cap though once again it's a more dress style boot so it just isn't quite the same like heritage the true double toe cap with the big bulbous toe um, I think that's pretty much it so this is where you're starting to get into that investment range where instead of just buying a disposable shoe you're actually investing in something that's gonna last you a few years and you can get resold and that's the real benefit of having that layer of leather right there is you can take that to any cobbler and they're gonna be able to peel that old outsole off slap a new one on and you're good to go. So for number three, now this is this one is, is pretty pretty easy to make an argument either way. It could be behind or ahead of the Thursday we just talked about, but it's the Iron Wedge, I think is what Red Wing called it. So this was their more experimental style boot where they removed that really thick slab of leather insole and replaced it with some foam and some thick fiberboard to make these a boot that are easier to break in, a little bit more of an entry level boot for people that aren't used to wearing really heavy boots. And uh, they did one batch of this and it doesn't seem like they've gone back to it because I think a lot of people were like, uh, Red Wing, you do Red Wing things, don't do what everyone else is doing, like put your leather in the, in the boots because that's why we like Red Wing. So um, I could see somebody putting this below the Thursday, but I think because of the upper construction the I, I just really like the oral legacy leather for me just alone that would put it above the thursday so but that's more of a subjective thing but it has a true toe cap 360 goodyear welt it's got the cork in the midsole so it's a really high quality boot it's just not as high quality as what we've seen from the rest of the red wing boots and so um i still think it's a good boot and i think for for its purpose it works well most people though like they go to red wing for that really heavy construction and this does not have it so i put that at the number three or two spot i've already lost the track again okay next to the number two spot <laughs> i have more boots than 10 i just realized there's going to be two number two spots because i have 11 boots up there but the number two spot 
is the Ariat. Um, I don't remember what this boot's called. It's one of the very first boots that we ever reviewed before we really had any context to, to really say what was what. We were mostly just judging off of amount of leather and the leather quality. But this boot still holds up pretty well. Um, I don't think they make this anymore, so maybe that's the reason we have two two number two spots because I don't even think you can buy this boot anymore. But it was a cool bison boot. Had a, the toe cap wasn't real, but it has a similar construction to uh, Thursday and the rest of the area work boots where you have like a big synthetic shank. You've got that foam, you've got the compressed cardboard and fiberboard and a big slab of leather on the outsole, full leather heel stack. The bison leather is really pretty and has like a nice malleable texture that breaks in really easily and is still durable. It's a really cool boot that I, I wish they still had around because it almost has that lace to toe sweep side panel there with the toe cap that's not a real toe cap. And so that's your co number two because you can't buy it anymore. Um, the other number two spot is the Thursday made in the USA. So this is essentially just an upgraded version of their other Captain boot, where you, they've got the Chrome XL style leather. I don't know if it's, a, if it's actually Chrome XL, um, but it's a nice thick slab and it's got a counter cover. It's got the similar sole construction to the rest of the Thursdays where you've got the foam, compressed cardboard, fiberboard, and then a layer of leather underneath that with some cork. The outsole is a true Vibram outsole instead of the Thursday branded one. The heel stack's full leather. The toe cap is not a true toe cap, but once again, it's more of like a half dress, half logger style boot. It's a really unique looking boot. Um, I think it, for those guys that are not willing to commit to a full on like uh, logger, real logger boot from like the Pacific Northwest, this is a good slim option that still gives you that same aesthetic. And I think because of all the amount of leather in here compared to the Ariats, I, I, I would still maybe put this one just a little bit above the, the other number two Ariats but um, it still doesn't have a, it's not like all the way leather. You know, there's, there's still some synthetic materials in there that do break down a lot faster than leather. And that's always like the big argument that people are always trying to, to decide between do I buy a cheaper boot that has synthetics or do I buy a more expensive boot with lots of leather? Well, if you talk to any cobbler, they're gonna tell you that the synthetic materials just don't last as long. So when it comes to actually resoling these, when you're planning on buying a boot that has the capability of being resold, so you can recoup some of that cost, those synthetics on the inside break down. And so when they come to resoling it, it ends up costing you more because they've got to replace layers. But once again, the nice thing that Thursday does is they add at least one layer of leather that kind of seals in that sole construction. So when the cobbler goes to replace this and he peels off the outsole, he's not peeling the outsole away from fiberboard that's gonna split and crack and fall apart. That leather's gonna hold a lot more true to its shape and true to its construction so that it's not gonna completely fall apart and cost you more money to resole. So, that, to me, that would give me just a little bit of edge on the area, but since the area is not available, um, it doesn't really count. So that's number two. Now for a couple honorable mentions. A, a true toe cap boot that uh, I wouldn't say is number two, but I just thought it was worth bringing up. This monstrosity, just because, I don't know, I was picking boots and I was like, oh, that's funny. It's like, a, it is technically a toe cap boot. It's technically a true toe cap boot. And uh, this boot was just fun to do, and I just thought I'd highlight it because if you haven't seen that video it's super embarrassing for me I was like in makeup and it was a few years ago and it's just a disaster okay not quite number one but close to number one is my personal favorite cap toe boot um, the one that kind of started the collaboration series not the indie ones but the indestructible boots once again I just kind of want to show you guys these just in case you Watch, just recently started watching the channel. You haven't seen some of these funnier and more interesting boots that we've done. So this was a boot that Nick's made me for a video where the concept was, let's make the most indestructible apocalypse, most layers, tallest, like grippiest outsole, everything, all the options put into a single boot. That was this boot and we shot it with guns. We cut it in half with a, it was like a 60,000 PSI uh, water jet. We. Um, kicked a bunch of stuff. Th that video was so fun to make. It was our first like really, really big, big in quotations production where we spent a lot of time planning it. And it has millions of views, which is really fun. And it's what spun off the indie series um, because I, I really like this boot and I wish I had a pair that I could wear regular life. And that's kind of the, the uh, origins of the indie series. So honorable mention to that. And like, honestly, I still kind of like want Nick's to make me one of these because I really like the lines of this boot. I like even like with the steel toe, it looks 
looks a little chunkier and more bulbous, so maybe one day I'll convince Nix to, to make me a real version of these that I can wear to something. I don't know. I don't, I would I don't I wouldn't even know where to wear them to be honest. And now to the number one, the best mock or not mock toe, the best cap toe, toe cap boot that we've ever cut apart in the channel. You might be thinking the Indy One because it is a really high quality boot. But the problem is it was a collab and I don't want to like, hey, the number one cap toe boot is the boot that I helped design with Nix. But I think it is still worth mentioning, like any of these Pacific Northwest brands like uh, Whites, uh, Nix, JK, Franks, all those guys, they make very similar boots with very similar constructions, and I believe they all have a, a cap toe option. So if you really want to get to that six to $700 price range and you want a really high quality one, those are a really good option. But the true number one cap toe boot, and this one, I was, after doing, before I did this, I didn't really expect this to be the number one, because sometimes we, we throw a little shade at this company, but it's just hard to dispute that the Iron Ranger isn't the number one toe cap boot that we've cut apart. It has a great construction, true, good, true, true Goodyear welted. It has the really thick veg tan insole. It's a true toe cap. It's nice high quality leather from SB Foot. It's thick leather. It's a uh, heritage construction. You know, there are some things that I wish they would improve. And we actually have a video coming out tomorrow of the updated version of the Iron Ranger to really check to see if, if, I, if Red Wings are starting to cut some corners because that was kind of the fear with that that uh, Iron Wedge is that uh, is, is Red Wings slowly going the way of every other brand and getting rid of all these these things that have built their brand or do they still make the boots like they used to? So as of right now, before we cut the Iron Ranger, the other Iron Ranger in half tomorrow, this is my number one toe cap cap toe boot. I think. I think you, it's pretty hard to dispute. I think you could, the number four through number two, I think you could argue is better if you really value comfort underfoot because the thing with Iron Rangers is they're hard underfoot, especially during the break-in. And they're not made for standing around on hard concrete all day. And so some of these other boots might be more comfortable. But, but when it comes to the overall quality and the truest toe cap boot, the truest, more heritage stylish boot that you can wear on any occasion. You can lightly work in it, you can wear it out in the town, you can wear it casually. It's hard to it's hard to dispute that Red Wing makes one of the best, if not the best, toe cap boot. Even for the value, it's made in the United States. It's $300, $350. I think it used to be closer to $300, but they've recently raised the price. So even comparing this to the Pacific Northwest brands, you really get you get a lot more for your money with the Pacific Northwest brands. You get a lot more leather throughout the sole construction. You get a leather heel stack, you get thicker leather, you get more leather in like the counter and everything. But it's also twice the price. And for a casual boot wearer, you don't always need the really heavy duty boots. And so I would say from a value standpoint, Iron Rangers are pretty hard to beat. From a stylish and like uh, iconic heritage style boot, the Iron Rangers like top three most iconic boots. And from just a true or true uh, quality standpoint, I still think these are the best quality boot of the lineup, except for the Pacific Northwest brands. But those don't really count because we haven't cut apart one of their their toe cap boots except for the collab. And but all this is contingent upon what's on the inside of the 2022 Iron Ranger that releases tomorrow. So if you haven't seen that, go watch that tomorrow. Um, it's on the main channel. And uh, but I have a feeling this is still going to be at the number one spot. And what I want to do is have you guys rank these as well. So we're going to put a form in the description where you can rank them for yourselves and we're going to tally up all the results and post them potentially in this video. I, or maybe, I don't remember, I don't know where we're going to post it. But I'd like to have you guys rank these and tell me where you think I'm off. What would you put as number one? Because people value different things for different reasons. <clears throat> and more leather doesn't always mean more better. And uh, so I think that pretty much wraps up ranking the top 11 top uh cap toe top top co <laughs> cap toe toe cap boots um and let me know what other toe cap cap toe boots you want me to cut apart because i was surprised at how few we actually had there's only 11 out of the hundreds of boots that we cut apart so what did i miss in this video what other brands do you want us to, to cut apart because i like doing these ranking things it's just a fun practice for me to be like 
all right, let's line these up and uh, organize them. And I think it's a valuable thing for you guys who just, instead of trying to find every single toe cap uh, video on our channel, it's just a nice comprehensive quick version of it to give you the, the, the general beats of each of these boots. And then for each individual one, we'll link all the videos to them in the description. So if you're like, oh, I, I really think the Jim Green sound interesting. I wanna watch that video. You can just click in the description, we'll put it there. And thank you guys for everything you do. I love this Rose Ample 2 channel. It's really fun to just and have less stress and less worry and less pressure on these videos and just kind of make what I want to make, make what you guys want to see and just be able to kind of BS around on the channel. So I thank you guys and uh, thanks for everything you do and supporting this channel. It's super fun. So thank you. See ya.